Today, we're going to explore whether Tesla is at its core just a car company, or perhaps it has a lesser known identity as a cutting edge AI powerhouse. We're going to explore Tesla's AI ecosystem, revealing how it's not just about getting from point A to B. Let's talk about Tesla's proprietary smart chips, software algorithms, the Dojo supercomputer, of course, the Tesla bot, the use of AI in energy, the factories, and so on. It's a matter of when, not if, that investors will realize Tesla's not just a force in the world of AI, but the biggest and baddest of them all. I've got Larry Goldberg here with us. I'd like to ask him this question. Larry, let's start right off the bat. <laughs> Am I right? Is Tesla going to be known as the best AI uh, play out there? Or yeah, it's an AI play, but not it's not going to be any, it's not going to be the top dog in the world. What's your thinking there? That's a leading question. <laughs> yeah. And I'm quite happy to follow your lead. I, I think Tesla have a real shot at being a dominant AI player. You know, leading is a difficult uh, word because it means the top dog. But I think that uh, Tesla will definitely be amongst the, the leaders. I think it'll be a surprising leader to some because people have it nailed as a car company. We know that it's a lot more. Um, but what's the most important factor here is that thematically, every business it's in, the primary differentiator in that business is its AI smarts. So whether it's in the pure energy business, which is you know a huge hardware component, or in the car business, which is dominantly a, a hardware component, or where you know if it's in the, the uh, a robot business, which is uh, quite a lot of hardware, but dominantly software. Whatever the factor of software is big differentiator that Tesla has is its AI software. And by the way, this is not new to Tesla. This has been the, th this has been the, the growing theme uh, from the first you know, vehicle that it, uh, it released because it started with software control uh, of the roadster, uh, software control of the, of the batteries and the heating. And it went on to you know, become central to the car's human interface and controls in, 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 in the first Model S. And now it's become a dominating factor. We, we, we talk about the software-defined vehicle. It was invented by Tesla. We talk about you know, the, the incredible user interface and, of course, FSD. So it's quite clear that software is thematic in all of Tesla's businesses. And you know, and if you look at the energy business, what is the differentiator between their big battery and everybody else's big battery? It's software. So, and, and that software, by the way, is AI driven. It, it's driven by the uh, capabilities of, of, of their AI. So here we are at the moment in time where we're seeing the transition from what is a manufacturer to what is a software vendor. And, and I think that's where we're at. Okay. And then, you know, when I asked Grok, who is the biggest AI players, Tesla does not fall into that list uh, because See, they... Grok, Grok's as dumb as any other <laughs> AI programs. I love it. I love it. Let me ask you again, who is the largest AI players? And uh, it's, you know, it's going to be, the, the answers are going to be like uh, the, you know, like the open AIs. Uh, well, you have to understand barred. that, you have to understand that they have a significant lead in terms of pure uh, AI-based uh, user pursuits. Um, you know, if somebody logs in and wants an AI support for a you know a bot they're writing or a particular program they're writing and they they're going to log into one of the major vendors today they're not going to log into tesla and i think that's where people that's how people are thinking about ai 
they don't realize that every car that every one of the six, four million cars that are driving on the road, five million cars right. think, uh, um, are driving on the road are, you know, AI driven, even if they're not using FSD. But but over time, that's going to change dramatically. Now, it all depends what you mean by who's the leader in AI. If you're talking about the number of inquiries, queries made, right. Right. Uh, to a general uh, uh, model, to, to, to a large language model or a foundational model. I don't think uh, Tesla will necessarily be in the lead of that. You may have trillions of calls or billions of calls or whatever the number is being made to, you know, a, a large a, a foundational model like OpenAI's uh, uh, model. Uh, but, but, if you think about the amount of compute being used by large scale grid controls, by large scale uh, vehicle controls, um, and and um, so on, then then clearly Tesla will be a, a major leader. Once the bot becomes productive, and we get into massive development, uh, massive production, massive marketing, and we start seeing bots by not the thousands or the hundreds of thousands, but by the millions, then the worm turns. Then then you're looking at, you know, extremely large scale implementations. I want to ask you about the difference between real world AI and large language AI. Before we get there, you know, let me, let me share this. And, um, you know, this is a chart that Tesla revealed last year. I think it was the, the month after July. It was in mm -hmm. August. Mm -hmm. And then we were all going, okay, so it sounds like that the dojo production started. Now, you know, we did hear in the last quarterly earnings call, you know, Elon's comments that some people took to mean that dojo is delayed. But if you follow this chart, and this is great, this was provided by RK, RMCK, RK, thank you for doing this pointed out that we are right here, March 2024, we're right here. So this idea of being the top five in the entire world should have been around February, if this is still progressing properly, but look how quickly it will grow to 100 extra flops by the October. So this is just months away. Then you combine that with Elon comments and other engineers comments that we're not, uh, you know, we're going to be able to have enough uh, compute for FSD by the end of this year or soon. And so it does it does it does feel like that they are still progressing this. I, we haven't heard anything from them. And this is units of A100 GPU. So this is not just dojo. This is everything that they can get their hands on. Um, they're moving this road. So they are on the path to be at least the, you know, the, having the largest data warehouse, uh, you know, largest compute power out there. So, you know. They're probably still uh, less than the others. Do you think, uh, like Meta and uh, and OpenAI and Microsoft? I don't know if you saw the number of uh, H one hundred H 100s that Meta had ordered. Yeah, it was in the tens of thousands. It's definitely more than uh, Tesla had ordered. Yeah. Um, you know, it's difficult to say. I, you cannot tell from this graph. Firstly, we don't know where on the graph Tesla yeah. is. Yeah. Secondly, you cannot tell from this graph how it compares with XYZ company. Um, I, I would be amazed if Tesla's uh, compute power exceed, exceeds that of the likes of Google, Meta, and Microsoft, simply because Google, Meta, Microsoft, and Amazon are servicing not millions, but hundreds of millions, if not billions of customers using, you know, chatbot. So, so just in terms of volume of compute, I don't think that's a measure. Um, I, I, I think that it is the issue of, firstly, right now, the training that's being done is really on language and, and, and some video, but Tesla's training has been done from the outset on video. So that gives them a significant lead in terms of experience on video. And I suspect uh, that it's a major lead. 
but it's a very narrow video focus up to now it's been a very narrow focus and that's been on driving so qualitatively and quantitatively there are huge differences between the companies i don't think we know yet how leadership is going to emerge in this market there could be a there could be such disruption due to change um, of one form or another that we are just not privy to or, or we can't foresee so i think these are kind of spurious comparisons if you ask my opinion yeah okay now that makes sense i agree so let's come back to the topic of you know tesla and their ai business and uh, so they talk about having the largest you know, database of videos. Yeah. They have a significant supercomputer compute. They have the best talent, uh, you know, at least competing with the others. And he talks about real world AI. Yeah. Can you, what's your definition of what real world AI is that no one else is able to do at this point? As he's, he's been claiming that this is a big differentiator. What do you think is real world AI? Real world AI is what you and I have. And that distinguishes us from uh, uh, qualitatively and quantitatively um, from all other living creatures and all other machines. And that is we can navigate our bodies through the world and control our environment to a very large degree. Uh, and that's real world. That's, uh, that's us functionally uh, succeeding within a, within the world that we live in. Um, and most of it is due to our real world knowledge, our real world intelligence. Emulating that uh, is what we may call real world AI. Now, it's really difficult to imagine true real world AI without embodying it in a in a form such as ourselves, like a humanoid form. Um, a vehicle is kind of an extension of our humanoid form. We've made our vehicles an extension of our humanoid form. And to the extent that the vehicles are using AI to drive themselves, that's kind of humanoid in a way. But until it's embodied in a human form, I don't think that's real world AI via V human beings. But the fact that the vehicles navigate themselves and control themselves within the real world, I think, does qualify, you know, as a component of that real world AI. And probably more like uh, more real world than any other uh, AI being used in the world today. I mean, for the most part, the AI that's being used in the world today is used in very, um, very marginal functions. It's used to write a bit of code or, or draft some code. It's used to draft some memos, summaries, and it's used to support uh, customer service. Not that, not that great, by the way. Um, so. The, it's used marginally in what may be called components of real world, but the closest we get to real world in AI today, I think, and I think this is the point that Tesla is making, is the car driving itself. Does that make sense? It does. I just I think it's important for us to articulate it, right? So the reason why when you ask anybody, including Grok, Who's the largest AI company? <laughs> People will say that it's you know the, the the large language models because they are pretty big and they have the talent and they have the use cases and they have the revenue, although small. But they are being given you know in stock wise, they're being given like massive uh, uh, <clears throat> market multiples because they believe that they are the leaders. Tesla today does not have any actual revenue from an AI, except you've pointed it out many times before energy people don't realize that they already are selling ai software to energy utilities and that is currently ai well they have, the, they have revenue from fsd yes and they have fsd, FSD the and, and as f correct and that's people just 
over over you know just oversee that they they over under appreciate that so once fsd becomes a real thing become mm -hmm. really big automatically tesla will have the most revenue from a because it's funny that even microsoft and openai they're charging 20 bucks a month it's not a business model quite there it's like tiny numbers at this point you know, you know it's the promise of the future it's interesting. Who was the first company who tried to sell AI as a revenue model? I would assume it's Tesla, but I don't know. No, it was IBM. Okay. Have you heard of Watson before? Yes. Yes. Okay. Talk about a miserable failure. Yes. What a miserable failure. And Too early. Yeah. When we think about how early they were and how mm -hmm. much they put into it mm -hmm. and you know, they completely missed the boat on large language models. I mean, yeah. so missed the boat. It, it is incredible. Yeah. And why did they miss the boat? Because their early experience with Watson was so damaging to the company mm. that the company wasn't prepared to take that kind of leap again mm -hmm. and kind of shut it down because they went too fast too soon. They mm -hmm. really believed their own lies mm -hmm. and you know i was i was visited by them in our in my prior company and they tried to sell us this whole bill of goods on what watson would do for us or how we could sell watson as part of our and i just looked at it and i thought you know this 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 stuff is terrible uh, i it mean they showed me you know this picture of a car and Watson did all this analysis and said that there's a 38% chance it's a cat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm look, I'm being unfair. I mean, sure. But 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 the truth was it was all yeah. lies. I mean, it yes. was all hype and it was the dying hope of a dying company mm -hmm. or the mm -hmm. hope of a dying company. And so they missed the boat. So I, I, I would caution and say that we are at the very, very beginning of what will be a long cycle. Listen, mm -hmm. in 1970, were you prepared to predict who the winner of the IC revolution would be, of the, of the transistor revolution? Mm -hmm. Would you have bet on a company called Intel, which didn't exist at that time? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. where we are. Yeah, We're in the 1970 mm -hmm. of the, AI. you know, yeah. you know of, of, and so it's just, it's just too early to tell. One thing we can say is that Tesla has an extraordinary, group of talent in this area. They're pioneers in this area of actually implementing AI in a real world product that is foundational to that product. This is unique. It's truly unique. And that product has, you know, a huge acceptance in terms of dollars and in terms of numbers out in the real world. So there are claims that can be made by each of these parties that you talk about. And clearly, you know, each have got some basis behind them. But it, we're in the 1970s of, you know, the, yeah. the mega processor world. What I like about Tesla's position and what they're doing is that they themselves will be the customer and they already are the customer. And we, I know in the intro, I kind of, uh, explained all the areas that Tesla's AI exists today. It's like, it's already helping with factories. Imagine every single one of the industrial arms having a camera. Uh, some of them already have it, but even just that much better to identify quality defects, to find out how to move faster. All these things can improve that. Who else is going to improve their factories with AI of, uh, compared to competitors, the, the gas car companies and the EV car companies? And then who's going to be able to create RoboTaxi, right? Who's got that data and be able to get there. So even if that's all they did, they'd already be successful. Then they're going to do the bot, which is like you said earlier, it's like the biggest AI play there is, right? Because this is like embodied AI. This is the ability for the bot to understand the world, yeah. to take action on the world. 
uh, which you know, there's still debatable whether or not you can teach a computer that's, you know, in, as feeding it with YouTube videos, could it learn on its own what the world is really like? Or does it need to touch, smell, and taste it and actually test things out to know? You know, when you pull that fridge door open, you can watch a video doing that. But then when you're actually physically opening it, do you realize that there's always this little tug because of the negative pressure put in and then you have to pull it up you know that kind of stuff you don't know this until you've physically done it right so yeah. it'd be very interesting to see how this all plays out but like you said earlier it's we're still early days so yeah and i yeah. think we could i think we could happily state that as we sit here today the use of fsd is the broadest mm. use of advanced AI, of, of real AI, or, you know, a real a large foundational model. Um, I mean, we could say that I think in 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 the near future, when FSD twelve goes wide, um, because the the well, even today with FSD, I mean, so many of the so many of the neural nets already control so much of the vehicle. But but yeah, I think that Tesla has that claim. But it's you know that's that's a I wouldn't say it's a specious claim. I would just say it's a limited claim because we're so early in the game. Mm -hmm. But you're right. I think the promise is there, and it's an exciting an exciting time. Thank you so much, Larry. That was a good conversation. Appreciate your contributions there. Follow Larry on X at uh, Tesla Larry. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.